You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. Today's guest is Hank Wu, an inventor of five issued and numerous pending patents, and has been the founder, CEO, and chief evangelist of a number of successful life science ventures, including R&D Magazine's award-winning Neuromatrix chip. Let's talk a little bit more about that uh, nonprofit that you guys are starting. Have you started it already, or you're looking at starting it once? Clinicals go through, or when is the when is the point? In fact, very early on in in the establishment of the company, we we decided that we would we would do that uh, as a matter of course, basically. So it's it's forthcoming. Okay, and then how does the nonprofit get funded? Then does cellular bioengineering fund everything for it, or do they fundraise? No, we would or? we would work with. Uh, again, going back to the theme, it really does take a village to make something like this work. Uh, we're working with a lot of you know ophthalmologists. Uh, in Hawaii and across the country. Uh, we're working with a lot of different hospitals, and we would expect um, uh, the hospitals uh, to donate uh, supplies, that uh, surgeons to donate their time, and that we will be donating corneal tissue so that you know, people every year who otherwise can never be, you know, afford this can have the benefit of a bioengineered corneal transplant. So almost like a clinic, but on a higher level. Uh, yeah, and there are, many, there are different mechanisms in terms of the, the physical delivery of such things. Would that be in Hawaii that it would be located, or would it be located somewhere else? I think it's. I think Hawaii is actually an extremely important strategic location uh, for our business, and this is actually a great segue. Evan. I'm glad you asked that question. When you really think about it, the reason why we're in Hawaii is not incidental. There's a very specific strategic reason why CBI is here, because when you think about it, there is a very large audience of patients and consumers who are in need of such tissues for transplantation across the Pacific Ocean, uh, Japan and many other parts of Asia. If you take the example of Japan alone, it's a seven-hour direct flight. We as a state know an awful lot about um, uh, hospitality and the Japanese language and culture. And we as a, a technology company, if we can really be able to provide and control the source of supply, there's no reason why Hawaii couldn't become a global center of excellence for regenerative medicine and specifically for corneal transplantation where we can draw very large numbers of patients from Japan and other parts of Asia to come to Hawaii for their transplantation. Especially with Hawaii being such a service-based industry, we thrive on tourism, we know how to take care of people. It would kind of be a nice mix that way, huh? Right, and also just on the practical side, you know, we're, what better place in the world uh, if you have to have your vision restored to be able to open your eyes for the first time and, and seeing the gray walls, you know, the gray walls of a, of a hospital somewhere, you're seeing that the wonderful beauty that, that is really Hawaii. How far off do you think that is in the future? Uh, I don't think we're very far from that at all. We're in the process of dialogue with the FDA in terms of beginning our human clinical work, and we'll probably be doing a number of centers across the world relatively soon. Would that be in the next, like, five years or ten years, you think? Oh, I think it will be within the next two years. Oh, within the next two years? Yes. Wow, we're going to be ramping up pretty quickly here then, huh? Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the projects you're currently working on besides, you know, looking to expand with these clinics nationwide? Yes, uh, I think at, at CBI our focus and our core competency really, again, is this whole area of regenerative medicine. So all of our research efforts is focused in that area. When you think about the aging process, you know, a friend of mine was you know, kidding the other day, this, you know, if someone had a pill that could make you live to your 150 years old, wouldn't that be great? And someone else came and said, no, who, who wants to live until 150 if you're not happy, you're not functioning? But the idea is if we can provide the, the mechanism to restore a function uh, so, that the, uh, so that uh, if, if uh, the eyesight could be replaced, certain nerve functions, soft tissue functions could be replaced so that we can significantly enhance the quality of life as we age, then it becomes a very different proposition. If we can age well, if we can age gracefully, if we can remember our friends and the people we love, and if we can do the things we really enjoy doing, then it becomes much more pleasurable to age, basically. So that's why I believe fundamentally the whole concept and the whole area of regenerative medicine to be able to create uh, replacement parts for disease, injured, and aging organs is going to be a huge part of the future of medical care. And as a result, I think many people believe that regenerative medicine is going to be the next major revolution in biotechnology. And that's certainly an area we hope to make some contribution. Interesting view for the future, Dr. Hank Wu. 
Thanks for joining us today on Greater Good Radio. For more information or a transcript of today's show, please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. This is your host, Evan Leong and Carrie Leong, saying please join us next time for another episode of Greater Good Radio Hawaii.